Now we're going to get into something kind of spicy. So apparently Candace Owens has been not only suspended, but also demonetized on YouTube. I can't help but think, you know, the timing of this is a little suspicious. Timing is a little weird, you know. Particularly, it, this just seems to happen after this interview went viral. This discussion here with Candace Owens and Rabbi Shmuley and Pierce Morgan just sitting there in the middle, you know, could just be a coincidence, but I, the timing is just a little, I don't know. I don't know, right? I watched this debate and I will say, I think she really grilled Rabbi Shmuley. I don't agree with everything that she said, but I think she really grilled him. But you just got to wonder. Here's a sample of that here. Actually, one of the things that plausibly unites people across all religions, Muslims, Jews, Christians, is that we all recognize that Rabbi Shmuley is unhinged. He's just mentally, in my view, unwell. And I don't say that as an attack. I say that as just a reality because I've never seen someone just make things up out of thin air that were never said. And trying to screen that as a defense of black people, the black people will never accept Rabbi Shmuley after Michael Jackson put him on a list of people who he felt were ruining his life. So you can stop your pleas with black America. They won't work. Now, going back now, I don't know. I, a lot of black people won't accept you still, Candace, either. So there's that. There's that, especially after you admitted that it was encouraged. Not only was it OK, but it was encouraged by the Daily Wire for you to attack black people. To the context of what you've asked us to speak about today, you know, I think one of the things that the world is recognizing and what we've always recognized is that there are radical fringe sects that break out within every single religion amongst every race. There's white supremacy, there's black supremacy, there's radical Islam, there are all of these Christ cults around the world. And I think right now it's important for people to understand that radical Judaism is also a thing. And you just are you're watching an example of it right now on your screen. The person sitting across from me or sitting, sitting next to me, I guess, it posted on his Facebook page in 2016 a tribute to someone who he said was his mentor. That was Rabbi Menachem Schneerson. He said he was his mentor and his friend. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Rabbi Schneerson, there were some Jews uh, uh, who believed that he was and is the Messiah. So rejecting Christ, but believing that that rabbi was his Messiah. Now, you may remember in the news recently, there was this radicalized faction of the Lubavitch Orthodox community in Brooklyn that were digging tunnels in Brooklyn and hurling benches at police officers. Well, and by the way, this is per the Times of Israel, that faction of individuals are followers of Rabbi Schneerson. So again, you, you have Rabbi Shmuley who, who believes that that's his mentor. They believe that he was the Messiah. What is it that becomes important to understand? What did Rabbi Schneerson preach? Well, he preached Jewish supremacism, the hatred of all non-Jews. And you don't have to take my word for it, because if I said it, they would say that's anti-Semitism. You should instead take the word of the two Jewish professors who translated his work. Those authors' names were Israel Shahak and Norin Mezvinsky, and their book was entitled Jewish Fundamentalism in Israel. From that book, we learned that Shmuley's mentor, Schneerson, describes the difference between a Jew and a non-Jew. And he says, quote, thus, we do not have a case of profound change in which a person is merely on a superior level. The body of a Jewish person is of totally different quality from the body of all nations of the world. And he talks about the substance of the Jewish body versus the substance of non-Jews, saying that the inner quality, quote, is is so different and so great that the body should be considered completely different species. So that is a belief. And you can go through his speeches and you will see that he continually talks about how non-Jews should be treated and that, again, we are a different species. This is what Rabbi Shmuley believes in. We have to come to terms with the fact that there are Jewish radicals and it's incumbent upon the Jewish community to call them out. I'm glad that you brought up my rhetoric about Black Lives Matter, the organization, and when which was basically allowing black criminals to take to the street to, to burn down, to loot, and to riot in the name of racism because it shows that I, I'm on equal footing here, that across the board, I do not support supremacism, whether it's coming from my community or whether or not it is coming from yours. And I think the entire world is now paying attention and wondering what is going on in Israel? What is this government? Is this a radical fringe government? And many people are concluding that the answer to that question is yes. 
So I just want to say I was actually surprised she was able to say all that without the interruptions, because you guys know how these debates are on Pierce Morgan show. Sometimes people are like, and Pierce Morgan, I think, is getting better about this, uh, not interrupting his guests so much. Uh, maybe he has been listening to some of the feedback that he received because it was kind of getting crazy where he wouldn't let people speak. You ask him a question, not let him hear anything. So that interview happened with Pierce Morgan and it went viral like that. That debate really took off. And so then we're just following a line of events here. RFK Jr. comes in and this is just wild. After that interview. RFK Jr. said during her interview on Pierce Morgan with Candace Owens, uh, with, oh, excuse me, during her interview on Pierce Morgan, Candace Owens referred to what she termed radical Judaism and the care and characterized the iconic, uh, uh, Schneerson as someone who preached Jewish supremacism and hatred of non-Jews. These words are a sickening and manifestly inaccurate description of a revered revered holy man who was respected and loved, beloved by all people of all faiths. He goes on to say, Rabbi Schneerson preached a message of unadulterated love, tolerance, respect, and universal justice for all humanity. My father considered him a spiritual mentor and sought his advice on diverse issues of morality and ethics. He once visited uh, the rabbi at two o'clock in the morning. As Americans, we need to distance ourselves from the troubling rise in anti-Semitism. We need to stand to you. We need to unity. I think he means unify. Oh no, we need unity. We need unity in our country, not divisiveness. That's what Rabbi Schneerson stood for. And there's a picture here of RFK. Uh, with Rabbi Schneerson. So what was kind of weird to me was the swiftness of RFK to feel the need to make some type of response about that. Um, I just, to me, that was just weird. Like, yeah, you got to come in and defend uh, your friend, Rabbi Shmuley. Maybe you should have just stayed out of that RFK. But so that happened, you know, I'm just, again, following the dots. Then this happened. So Candace Owens posted this, there will be no show today or at all this week. That's because YouTube has issued me a strike and a one week suspension for my sit down with Kanye. They also removed the interview as hate speech as it was mass reported by Zionists. Their tactics never change. So I didn't see the interview that she had with Kanye. If you did in the chat, please let me know. So I don't, I can't say I know what was said because I didn't see it. But that being said, I just, I questioned the timing of all this. Like I said, it is right after she had the debate with Rabbi Shmuley, where she did kind of school him on that one. You know, she did like, she won that debate. Let's just keep it real. But then all of a sudden she's saying that YouTube you know, removed the video, the interview that she had with Kanye, then gave her a strike so she couldn't, you know, stream at all or whatever this week uh, or do any premieres either. I don't think you can do that either. And I just, again, I'm lining up the, the events after the debate, right? Now, I want to show you what they said because she has the description here. Additionally, the video Kanye West and Candace Owens episode 42 has been removed from the Candace Owens YouTube channel because it violates our hate speech policy. So that's what he's saying there. And he said, uh, well, he or she, sorry. YouTube does not allow content containing conspiratorial claims that individuals or groups are evil, corrupt, or malicious based on their protected group status. Specifically, the video in question contains claims that Jewish people control the media. Again, for YouTube's sake, I am reading something that says the video in question contains claims that Jewish people are controlling the media. And there's something that stood out about this to me that I want to let you guys know about. Everyone that I know that has had videos removed, and that includes myself, they were never given that much detail about why it was removed. And it was just, it was interesting to me that with this particular removal, 
they gave her great detail about what was said in the video or what they're saying was said or claimed in the video that caused the removal. And I've never seen that. And don't believe me? Ask Kit from Hardlands Media. Ask Pasta from Convo Couch. Ask my comrade Nick from RBN. Ask these people. Ask them. And they'll tell you they never give that much detail. Usually it's vague and says it violates this policy, but they I've never seen it where they tell you specifically, it says it right here, specifically what is in the video or what was said in the video that led to the removal. I've never seen that. So I don't know if that's just them trying to improve their process. I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay. I did. I'm just being honest. But don't you guys find that to be a little bit odd? They gave her that much detail, but nobody else I know of got, has gotten that much detail. Nobody. No one. So it made me wonder, what was this really? How did it get to that point? Yeah, JB knows. We all know. All of us have been in this. All of us have been in that seat at some point where we've had videos removed. JB said, no, nah, they're never this direct. Never. So it seems like to me they were sending a strong message. New York Varsity said, Sabby, they are not this specific because if you challenge the specific nature and they are wrong, they have to apologize. There you go. There you go. So there's more because it wasn't just that. So she goes on to say right here, all who watched the podcast know that ye was calm and filled with love, speaking about the world coming together to defeat evil. 2.5 million people watched my debate with Rabbi Shmuley last week. The world knows why I'm being targeted. And frankly, I have never felt more confident that I'm the right person for this to happen. Again, I didn't see the, the interview, but I questioned the timing, the sequence of events after this debate with Rabbi Shmuley, right? Then she goes on to say, thus far, I've had zero strikes on my account. I have never been inundated with three back-to-back -back content hits within minutes, plus an email that I am now fully demonetized. We all know exactly who is behind this and why. So this piece I think is really important. She is saying she's never received a strike at all. And that she was hit with back-to-back -back content hits within minutes. So I'll show you those right here. So she put up the screenshots here. This is her email. See, and this is what it looks like, guys, for those of you who don't have YouTube channels. It says YouTube removed the content. That was at one. Look at the timestamp. I started at the bottom. YouTube removed your content. 159. YouTube remove your content 159. So two at 159, same time. And then another one, YouTube remove your content at 150. So they remove three videos back to back like that. Then let me go here. They sent her this as well. It says uh, violations of YouTube uh, partner program policies, including our ad friendly guidelines and community guidelines. The Candace Owens channel has been suspended from the YouTube partner program. Examples of this include community guidelines violations outlined above, along with ad friendly guidelines, which state that content that incites hatred against promotes discrimination, disparages, or humiliates an individual or group of people is not suitable for advertising. The channel can be reevaluated 
for the YouTube Partner Program after 90 days when you see the option to reapply on your monetization page. A channel that reapplies to be a part of YouTube Partner Program will be readmitted only after it has addressed the issues that triggered the suspension. So from my experience, I haven't seen anyone that has applied for the reapplication to the partner program get reapproved. Just from my experience. And this was long before October 7th. So they'll say that to wait 90 days, but I haven't seen anyone get reapproved. Now, this part here where it says after it has addressed the issues that triggered the suspension. What that means is she's probably going to have to scrub her channel, meaning she's probably going to have to remove most of the content on her channel. Because as long as that content is still there, because what they're doing now, they're probably going through her channel now to find if there's other things too. Because if you get three, once you get three strikes, that's it. So... During this time, and once the initial upload restriction period is over, you can continue to upload new content. Make sure you review all your videos with our YouTube partner program policies, including both our advertiser-friendly guidelines and community guidelines in mind and to edit or delete any videos that violate our policies. So that's what I was telling you guys. She's gonna have to scrub her channel and that channel isn't, by the way, that channel's not new um, because when she was fired from the Daily Wire and she said, you know, we're going to, I'm going to be independent, do my own YouTube channel. When she uh, put the channel on, on Twitter, I went to that channel and I noticed when it looks at the about, so you can always go to the creation date, looks at the about. And I was like, oh, this channel was not new. It's been there before, but she had stopped adding content on it. Right. So the channel had already existed, but I think she's going to have to go through and scrub her channel. And I just, look, so this account here, Cheryl said, yep, we all know who it was. It was karma. And it's because you're a complete fruitcake. Karma ain't happy. So suck it up and stop being such a raving psycho. Karma will always be watching. And she responded with this screenshot. I want people to see this. There's an account right here. Um, it's called Awesome Jew. And it says, you can report her YouTube channel here. Did Candace put the date on? Oh, she didn't get the date in the screenshot. I was going to see if she got the date in the screenshot. Because I was going to compare it to the debate. You know, if it, to see if it was after the debate or not. Um, but yeah, and there's another screenshot here, same account. And it says reporter issue and it shows right here, like what's the issue. So yeah, they, they went after her. Um, yeah. So all I can say is this, I don't agree with Candace on like 98% of things. Um, that being said, I will say, guys, I told you before, the censorship is a problem. Now, maybe she can get a, a rumble contract. I don't know if she has one or not, but maybe she'll be able to get a rumble contract because other than that, rumble doesn't really pay anything unless you have a rumble exclusive contract. And then with those, like most people I know, they can't live stream on YouTube or they can only live stream like maybe a little, little bit, like an hour or so. And then, but most of the streaming content has to be on rumble or something like that. Um, but maybe she can get like a rumble contract or something. I think Candace will be fine. Like I said, she's pretty, she's well off. Okay, <laughs> let's put it that way. She's pretty well off. But I told you guys about the censorship. And it's not just, and the thing is, it's not just YouTube. I am watching faculty members get fired, 
lose their jobs because they spoke out against Israel. I'm watching people and not just faculty members, but just people lose their jobs in general because they spoke out against it. Uh, Butch Ware, who is Jill Stein's running mate, has talked about this, how he has been rejected uh, from the University of Michigan. He was supposed to go speak there and they rejected him because, you know, he, he stood up for Palestinians. Like, it's not just YouTube. We're talking about serious form of fascism. And this is why when people say you got fascism on the right, no, you got fascism across the board, son. Cop City is fascism. So it's really messed up. Like I said, I don't agree with her on most things, but I don't agree with anybody being censored or silenced. Like that is not cool. And I do not agree with people being deplatformed. And I've said this over and over again. So that's crazy because her channel has, Eric, can we pull up her channel real quick? I'm just curious. We're going to pull up um, her YouTube channel because I want to see what, Shirley? Electric Intifada was shut down on YouTube too? Wow. Wow. Okay, I guess I need to check their Twitter page because I haven't seen that in a while. I need to check their Twitter page. That's okay. Wow. So on Candace's- Believe that the elites are aiming- What was that? Oh, does she have an auto? Oh, she has an autoplay video. Candace, why do you have that? Okay, here we go. Um, so she has 2.4 million subscribers- and if you want to know, this I'll tell you how you can tell how old the channel is. If you click on about and you go down, it says this. So this channel was created September 22nd, 2015. So um, if we were to go to videos, I'm trying to see what's still here. Okay. If you click on oldest, see, it'll take you back to seven years ago. So that's what I was saying. It's not a new channel, but it's just she walked away from it for a while, I guess, after she started with Daily Wire. And All right, guys, welcome to another special episode of Candid. Now, she was putting up more, but yeah. So you'll you'll see that she doesn't have new videos this week. We got the latest. Yeah, the last video was two weeks ago. It's crazy, guys. Like, I just... That's wild. That's wild. 